Whether or not Star Wars actually works, it could severely strain America's relations with other nuclear powers. Both Russia and China remain highly suspicious of American intentions, and both have strenuously objected to Star Wars. They feel that even a limited American missile defense will jeopardize their ability to retaliate if the United States launches a surprise missile attack against them. As a result, Star Wars may force Russia and China to build and maintain a bigger arsenal of nuclear missiles and keep them ready to fire at a moment's notice. According to Joseph Serencion of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace, deploying Star Wars could create greater dangers than those posed by Iran, Iraq, or North Korea's missiles. Collapses if the international security regime uh, is, is fundamentally offered uh, altered rather by poor relations between the United States and Russia, poor relations between the United States and China, we could be facing a much more dangerous threat from those existing arsenals than we are likely to encounter from the potential arsenals of these three small states. Why would the Clinton administration risk reviving the nuclear arms race in order to deploy a system which, in all likelihood, will not work? One possible answer is that four of America's top aerospace corporations have large stakes in the Star Wars program. Lockheed Martin is developing the interceptor missiles. The kill vehicle is made by Raytheon. TRW is building the ground control center. And Boeing has been tasked to make all these technologies work together. In 1997 and 98, these four companies combined spent $34 million on lobbying Congress and contributed $7 million to congressional election campaigns. So what you must look at then is what is the real reason for this push towards deployment? And I think clearly it's money, it's the aerospace corporations wanting to uh, get a okay on moving the arms race into space. The rush to deploy the National Missile Defense System combined with the strong possibility that the system will be ineffective, suggests that today's version of Star Wars is only the yeah, beginning. Surely one concern is once you spend, you know, 20 to 50 billion dollars putting up a system, and when people realize that it's not going to be effective against even the most basic threats out there, the call will be to improve the system. It is the first step. It is the Trojan horse. And following that, already, Right now, TRW, Boeing, Lockheed Martin, Raytheon, they're working on the follow-on technologies. They have the funding, and they're developing them today. They will soon be deployed. Space-based lasers we're talking about. They will have offensive capability. They will have the ability to hit targets in space and down to the Earth. The space-based laser is an orbiting satellite which would detect and destroy long-range missiles in their first few minutes of flight. They would be a design for missile defense. Uh, and also, uh, there's always a possibility of uh, space-borne lasers knocking down the enemy satellites. And it's presumed that uh, would the uh, opponent's satellites taking a good look at the United States. And if you got into a war, you'd want to knock those down. An orbiting weapon capable of such precise attacks could become one of the most potent offensive weapons ever. So the ballistic missile defense system is the way to get the American people to support the idea of having uh, space weapons, and uh, that's by calling them defensive. And then the follow-on technologies that will soon be deployed thereafter will be the way that they come in and begin the, uh, the actual deployment of offensive weapons in space. Whether or not Star Wars can really neutralize the missile forces of other countries, it will leave the rest of the world feeling more vulnerable to American military power. In a world still on edge from America's bombings of Yugoslavia, Iraq, and the Sudan, few countries are likely to trust the United States to use its newest technologies for purely defensive purposes. In fact, a national missile defense might make the United States an even more aggressive player on the world stage. It is only going to uh, 
uh, create the tensions between countries. It is only going to make uh, warfare even more likely and even more possible. And it's even going to make the United States a little more uh, secure, the government in the United States more secure in thinking that we can go ahead and utilize these systems because we have this control and dominance.